I'll just take you quickly through the result. Uh, as we usually do, uh, we'll, we'll um, run through a few of our buys and sells for the last six months. Uh, and then I might just finish on the portfolio to have a bit of a chat about you know, how, how we're seeing things, uh, where we're positioned and, and how, how we're looking for the year ahead. But as Matt indicated, Tom Milner's with me, so any difficult questions I'll hand over to Tommy. But um, <laughs> thanks again for having us. Morgan's are a big supporter of BKI, which, which we appreciate. I think in previous years, Matt, you've indicated that Morgan's handled about 20% of the, of the BKI share register, so we, we appreciate your support. Uh, we, we've had a pretty we've had a pretty good six months to be honest in what's been a, a tougher market. Um, there's, there's a few lines here on, on, on slide three. Uh, the numbers we really focus on is this net operating result, which we consider to be uh, a normalised profit result, which was up seven percent for the six months. Uh, our earnings per share was up four percent. So you may recall we had a share purchase plan in May, uh, and then we have some DRPs as well. So there's a few more shares on issue. Um, but importantly, we've increased the dividend over the previous six months. So that's up one percent. So uh, you know, we compare ourselves to a lot of other LICs and to date we're the only one that's increased the dividend in this six month period. So we're, we're pleased with that. Uh, we're trying to build a reputation of a dividend growth story, high yield, but also just gradually increasing that dividend every six to 12 months is important to our shareholder base, which we now have 15,000 shareholders and a market cap of 1.1 billion. So this is kind of how we try to operate. Our net operating profits has just increased uh, gradually over the last few years. Um, in the last six months, the things that helped us out were increased dividends from New Hope, Woolworths, Wes Farmers, um, TPG and Telstra were a drag on our result. We can touch on that again in a moment. Uh, the other thing I'll just touch on as well is that um, in the previous slide, you would have seen there's a bit, a bit of a difference in what would be a reported profit result. So special dividend income can throw our result around. A little bit a year ago, we participated in the Telstra buyback, uh, which netted us almost $4 million. Uh, this year, the only special dividend income we had was from the TATS Tabcorp transaction, which was about 400 grand. So that's the main reason for the drop in the <coughs> what is the reported profit number. This is our total shareholder returns. We do include franking credits in, in this number. Um, as, as Matt said, over the last year in a market that's been pretty hot at some of the smaller end and the small resources, um, you know, we're, we're pleased to be able to keep pace with the market. Uh, we're very much tilted towards the top 20 and the bigger stocks, we do have some smaller companies and, and we, you know, we, being a closed end structure, we can buy smaller names, not get worried about being caught up in liquidity events, um, but we like to buy small companies with management aligned to shareholders, good returns and dividend paying companies and hold them for the long term. But um, you know, just focus here on that longer term number. BKI has been listed now for 14 years uh, and that 11.2% total shareholder return is quite pleasing. Uh, dividend history is obviously important. We've been driving our dividend higher over a number of years and long may that continue. Uh, the last day to participate uh, is the 9th of February. If you want to get hold of the dividend, it will trade X dividend on the 12th of February. And you know we're important, we always pay our dividends and our shareholders early. Uh, so dividends will be paid before the end of February. Um, let me just touch on this very quickly. This is an important slide, we think, particularly for a lot of our shareholders in pension mode. Uh, what we've done in this slide, and we've shown this before, is that if you invested $10,000 in BKI at inception at the end of 2003, continue to reinvest your dividends, uh, the yield effectively you'd be getting on cost is almost 19%. Uh, in a market where term deposits are tough, um, especially for a lot of uh, our older population who are relying on income, uh, you know, that gap is a pretty powerful story. So we're, we're trying to drive home the fact to, you know, to all shareholders, fact, in fact, but those who still have a bit of time before they hit the pension mode, if you can invest, um, even consider something like a BKI as a core holding, a 20% holding, reinvest your dividends, um, stick into BKI, get a good yield, low cost, and um, you know over time, that yield on cost is, is very powerful. On top of that, we've got capital growth as well, of course. So a dollar invested in BKI at inception, again, if you reinvested your dividends, is about $4.30 today. So it's been a, it's been a good story. Um, I just want to touch on fees quickly, and then we'll um, just show you what we've been doing and where we are positioned at the moment. But um, so let me just quickly touch on this. This is the, um, as Matt said, contact asset management now manages the BKI portfolio. We've been very focused on increasing the profile of BKI. We think that's part of our role as, as contact. So you know, we, we've invested a bit of money in seeing a few advisors and research houses uh, to promote BKI. So what this has done, things like the Lonsec recommendation, which is a good endorsement of the, of the strategy, has opened a lot of doors with financial planners and advisors. So 
uh, we think that'll help um, kind of maintain the premium that we're currently trading on, but also increase the liquidity in the stock. So we're happy to share any of those reports with you if you wish. Uh, so just on the fees, we only charge 0.1 of a percent to manage BKI. It's as low as anything in the market. Um, history shows that fees are one of the biggest determinant of total return over investors' lifetime. So we're very focused on this. You in this room and, and on, on the line will be aware that this flight from active to passive, especially in the US, is only gaining momentum. Uh, a lot of that, we believe, is driven by fees. Uh, we wrote a report a couple of months ago on this, and it's a, um, it's a pretty big trend. And there's a lot of uh, managed funds in this market that are still charging one, one and a half percent and give you index performance. So you know, we think that's going to continue to come under pressure. We're very focused on maintaining this low fee strategy at 0.1 percent and 17 bips to manage the whole BKI portfolio is, uh, is very important. So that's just a slide showing the comparison to ETFs, which most of them in Australia are about 30 bips still. Uh, we're well below that. So uh, as, as we saw earlier, we're getting outperformance and a very low fee. You know, we believe it's the best of both worlds. Uh, so just onto the portfolio, I can talk about some sector things in a moment, but over the last six months, uh, as I said, we raised some money from a share purchase plan. We put about $50 million to work into the market over the last six months. Uh, Tabcorp is the biggest name, but that's mainly the tax transaction. So that's about a $10 million investment into Tabcorp. Uh, two new positions have been Goodman and Harvey Norman. Some of that's actually been driven out of the things we're learning from our Herb Investments portfolio. Uh, but then we've added to other positions, some are weakness uh, and some just continue to, to, to add to, to drive a bit more yield. So Westpac and Nava are an example of that. Um, Macquarie we've been buying for a long period of time. Uh, and then we like the healthcare space as well. Um, we've added to Amcor at the expense of Brambles. Uh, and we actually did reduce our position in Combank a little bit by about 2% um, a few months ago after we got the dividend. And, and we, as I said, we put that money back to work into Westpac and NAB. So I'll come back to this slide in one moment, but let me just finish on, uh, before I do that, just finish on the sector exposure. So as you can see, this is a very well diversified portfolio. Uh, when I get back to the names in a moment, you'll see it's a very much a blue chip portfolio. So, you know, what, what I believe we're offering shareholders um, in BKI at the moment and potential shareholders is, is a good yield, a 6% gross up yield, very solid portfolio, uh, good dividend growth. Um, but in this market, as people are screaming out for yield, um, you're certainly getting it out of BKI. But here you can see a well diversified portfolio across the financials, healthcare, utilities, telcos. We have 6% cash. As I said before, I think in this forum that you know, we will never go to 20% cash. We believe that investors come to BKI for an Australian equities exposure, not for us to manage your cash position. Um, but you know, there's, some, there's some good growth momentum in the market at the moment. We're certainly not hiding in cash. So on that, this is our portfolio as at the end of December. Uh, a lot of the same names we've had for a long period of time here. I think the, probably the biggest move up in terms of weight, mainly through share price performance, has been New Hope, which had a good year. It's up 60%. Uh, on the flip side, obviously, Telstra and TPG have had a tough year. It won't be news to anyone here. Uh, but as, as I said a moment ago, we think it's a good balance of yield and growth. We think it's a very solid portfolio. Uh, and we've got some very experienced hand, old heads on our, uh, on our board. Uh, and you know, we think it's a pretty safe set of hands, low fee, high yield, and some good growth. So with that, uh, I might pause there and open to any questions.